Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys about something that I started the other day in another video, and I thought I would continue that uh, because I talked about training with belts and how training with a belt makes us stronger, how it gives better muscle activation, uh, and, and that's universally accepted and proven both in the anecdote and in the scientific literature. All right, anyone at this point in the game who is telling you that you can't lift more weight with a belt uh, has ignored all the anecdotal evidence in powerlifting and they have ignored the scientific literature actually studying it in the lab. All right, so as a general rule, when the anecdote and the science all agree, when you stand against it, you're going to look pretty stupid. Okay, be realistic here. You're going to look pretty stupid at that point. Not saying you might not be right, but the odds are so astronomically against you that you're just going to look dumb. So, now that that's out of the way, let's come over to the point about core. Because this is a point of contention. And it's one that I tried to argue against in the past. I have oftentimes promoted beltless training in the past. said, look, we should spend half our year doing beltless training. And I used anecdote of citing two world record holders who recommend that, right, in powerlifting. And at the time, uh, Jamie Lewis was a 181 powerlifting world record holder, and at the time, Dan Green was like a 242 world record holding powerlifter. However, keep in mind, they both set their records while wearing belts. They set their records wearing belts. They both promoted doing significant amounts of beltless training through the year. And I pointed out, like, well, anecdotally, these guys are breaking records doing that. And I always pointed out that we want to make sure that our core stays strong. And I had other people argue against me who say, look, look, just wear your belt year-round, okay? Wear your belt on exercises that involve the abs. The research shows better abdominal activation. Okay? It shows often better spinal erector activation. And of course, I would point out that, that EMG data is not universal. It's flawed. It, it can't, it isn't always perfectly accurate. Okay. That used to be my defense. There comes a point. There comes a point when, as a lifter and someone giving advice, when some of the best coaches in the world are saying you're wrong and there's actual data measuring it, saying you're wrong, there comes a point where you have to just say, you know what, uh, I, I'm, I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Well, let's come over to the point. What's the philosophy of this channel, the way I've taken it in the last year or two? We throw out dogma and we do what works. As a coach myself with over a dozen clients, I'm responsible for their strength gains. I can't be dogmatic. I got to do what works. Someone who puts out information for an audience of over 100,000 people can't be dogmatic. I got to promote what works. So what works? Belts make your core stronger if you know how to use them. Okay. It makes your core stronger if you know how to use it. Why? Your abs brace against the belt. If you're braced and you have a deep breath and you're braced against a belt, and I'm talking about on your standing exercises, we can argue, okay, it doesn't matter on your laying stuff, it just makes you stronger. All right, examples here that you're seeing in this video, deadlifts, squats, standing presses. Your abs are bracing against it. Your erectors brace against it. When we slap electrodes on these things and measure them with a belt versus without, we see higher muscle activation. You know, another sort of argument I used to use against that? Well, higher muscle activation doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a better training response in that muscle. When I look back and listen to the sort of excuses I made for that, I'm just like, Jesus Christ. I was that dogmatic. I was so dogmatic about it that I literally made that statement. 
So I'm going to poke a little fun at myself, and I'm going to poke fun at you people out there who are using the same sort of argument I used to. You're about to get made fun of, guys. If you go and you take data like that showing higher EMG activation, particularly in a stabilizer like the abs, that's what we're using them for. I were talking about your abs and stuff getting stronger as stabilizers on your squat and deadlift and standing press. Well, just because it's activating more doesn't mean that it's getting a better training response. Well, what in the hell do you think gives a training response? Activating less? Do you think less activation produces more training response? Like, well, what are you comparing more training response to? Holy crap, you talk about being dogmatic. And look, guys, I love the idea of raw lifting. Look, I'm doing these squats right here with no wrist straps, no shoes, no socks. I still got my belt on. Still got my belt on. And of course, I got my running shorts. People give me a hard time about that. I'm like, you guys don't understand. Number one, it's hot in Houston. Two, I don't like having to wash all my gym clothes as I get sweaty. Number three, I'd be naked all the time if it was illegal. Okay? So, suck it. Now, over to the point. Over to the point. I love raw lifting. Belts are causing greater activation of your abs and your erectors. Notice since I've gone over to belted training full time, I don't do any beltless training on anything that's standing ever. Notice I keep getting stronger. Notice my core holds. Notice that I'm able to maintain weights more upright all the time on squats. Think maybe my core is getting stronger. So this idea, well, if you wear a belt, your core is going to be weak. No, you're making your core stronger. The belt elicits greater muscle activation in your abdominals, your erectors. You're making them stronger. If you know how to brace. Am I or am I not stronger? Since I've gone over to all belted training. I wear a belt for 90% of my lifting. I mean, obviously not band curls. Obviously not laterals laying over against a bench. doing on everything else is my core not stronger it is stronger am i stronger yes across the board has my abs gotten weaker no no so i've rejected my old nonsense and my old anecdote and i've gone with here's what the data says and lo and behold i keep getting stronger the miracles never cease. The miracles never cease. So it's like, wait, are you telling me that when you ignore anecdote and you ignore opinions and you look and say that, hey, this is what the research shows in the lab and this is what 90% of the top coaches in the world also do and they, they overlap, that when you start doing that, that you get stronger? It's a damn miracle. Who would have thought, who would have ever imagined that if you do the things that the data repeatedly shows in the lab to be true, that's also recommended by 90% of the best strength coaches in the world, we don't care about the other 10% because they're in the minority. Let's go with the majority. That when you do the things that overlap on those two things, you start getting stronger. Who would have imagined, right? Well, that's exactly what happened. Training with a belt correctly makes your abs and your erectors stronger and more developed. Okay. Simple fact. I don't hear any bodybuilders coming here saying, my waist burger. Jesus Christ. Stop using growth hormone and insulin. Okay. That's why your waist gets big. 
it's not from muscle. It is impossible for your waistline to get bigger from gaining muscle. It's fat. It's fat around your organs. Shut up, you idiots. God, I hate bodybuilders so much. Can we just ban bodybuilding? Sorry, little side note there. Back over to the point, guys. Just wear your belt. Learn how to use it correctly. Wear your belt. Get a good lever belt. Get you a nice six inch belt. You can brace your abs against. I don't care the brand. Doesn't matter. I don't even know what brand mine is. Your abs are going to be stronger for it. Learn to use it. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.